The US Navy today is the strongest navy in the world. This is partly due to the stronger than Russia. <laughs> we learned that the hard way. Yeah. I learned that the hard way. We both way. did. Everyone's coming We just for me. we just assumed that they might have had a decent navy. How is supposed to know? We don't research into this, but now we're learning. This is the whole point of these videos. We learn. I still think Russia's stronger. Apparently not. Other nations simply can't afford the colossal military spending required to field a navy that can compare. As a result, in addition to its record number of aircraft carriers, the US Navy features equipment that one could only find in science fiction movies. Mm. Let's take a closer look at what kind of armament the US installs on its ships. In this video, you'll learn what kind of missiles US ships are armed with. We'll tell you about the most modern forms of long-range weapons, such as universal ship installations, innovative railguns, and powerful lasers, weapons that may soon change the face of warfare wow. dramatically. At the very top of our list is the 76.2mm OTO Nalara 76 naval gun. So powerful, you could tell, like, just from it shooting, the whole camera's shaking. Do you know what that reminds me of? What? Uh, back in the day, something about years, many years ago, where soldiers had that big, long tank like, and then they had to light it up. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, look, yeah, it's That's what it reminds the me way of. it shoots. Yeah. yeah, like as if someone lit it and ran away yeah. and then like, boom. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it looks like that. I don't know what that's called though. Comment below what that's called. It does seem like that. Originally from Italy, it was adopted by the US Navy back in 1975 and is still in active use on various ships, such as frigates, corvettes, patrol boats, destroyers, and squadrons. The system so is extremely compact, allowing it a to cannon. be deployed on even- Huh? A cannon? Yeah. I, what, do you think that's what it's called? Yeah. I don't know. I think I, it might have a more technical term. I don't know. A cannon's like just a cannon, right? Where A general term. Yeah. Well, I guess you could use it for different things, but- Even the smallest warships. The high rate of fire and variability of ammunition made it capable of close in point defense as well as air and ground support. The OTO Malara 76 uses armor piercing, incendiary, oh. and fragmentation projectiles. If necessary, a guided projectile capable of destroying maneuverable anti ship missiles can be engaged. To conceal the cannon on a ship, it can be installed inside an invisible dome. That way, the enemy won't even be able to tell where the shell came from. I thought we should put you up on a wall and test how powerful that is. <laughs> Launch seven bullets and just see what Nobody's happens. Nobody's laughing here. <laughs> the viewers aren't even laughing. I'm sure they they're looking the like this. <laughs> no, they're laughing, mate. Mark 38 is based on the M242 <laughs> Bushmaster a 25mm automatic gun developed by McDonnell Douglas engineers. It wasn't by chance that the engineers chose the M242. It was chosen for its design, which allows the chain gun to fire almost non-stop, varying its rate of fire from single shots to its maximum safe rate of fire, depending solely on how quick pressure drops in the barrel after firing along with the mechanical endurance those bullets look mad, don't they? And th these are like the American Navy must find it very easy to sink other ships if they need to. Because look at the weaponry on them. How easy those bullets! You're sinking a ship so quick. You're pu I putting mean, holes for it. I mean, a lot of money is being pumped into the military. They will have top-notch equipment. Yeah, it's mad. Though. It's scary though, isn't it? Because like it just shows. You just can't fuck with them. Don't mess with them. But it's probably good because America needs to police. Because imagine they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. We don't know what would be happening with other countries. Pirates. Anyone will come and take over the US as well. And uh, bad intentions as well. Yeah. And at least America's got the power, but it's in the right hands because they kind of police the world in a way. Keep everything stable. In check. In check, yeah of the unit. In addition, the short barrel makes installation of the armament inside the turret much easier. The gun is used Damn. by the US Navy on warships for defense against light surface targets as well as coastal targets. 
In extreme cases, it can also be used for assault. That is sick. The gun has undergone a number of upgrades, resulting in an increased rate of fire, which allows for more effective use in combat. Mm. The Phalanx CIWS, also known as the Phalanx, is a ship-based anti-aircraft artillery system that entered service with the US Navy slightly before the Mark 38 in 1980. How is it locking onto the plane like that? That's mad. So imagine the Air Force is trying to come across and the thing just- And imagine it. how fast it's traveling as well. It'll probably, if it started shooting, it'll probably fucking take it down. You are. Mad. The system is used Yo. by the Navy primarily to counter anti-ship missiles with supersonic and subsonic flight speeds. The Too Phalanx mad. CIWS consists of the M61A1 six-barreled automatic gun, two radar stations, an electronic turret, control panels, barbette, and of course the mount on which this is all set. The Phalanx CIWS is mainly installed on US Navy warships, but there is also a ground version, the Phalanx LPWS, which is being tested as part of the Sea Ram air what defense system. What the hell? It protects against What was that? That was like some missile shit. I don't even know what that was. That looked fucked. Gosh. <laughs> Imagine seeing that and you didn't even know that was getting tested. You'll think it's judgment day. <laughs> I would. <laughs> You'll think the world's coming to an end. So mortar, and artillery fire. From defensive weapons, we move on to more futuristic weapons, which you've probably already seen more than once, be it in games or movies. Let's We're see. talking about the railgun, of course. Uh. An impulse accelerator, which uses an electromagnetic force, also known as the Lorentz force, to accelerate its projectiles to insane speeds. The railgun's original range of fire was 112 miles as early as 2015. Wow. And in the future, military engineers intend to increase the figure even further, bringing it to 250 miles. How are you shooting from 250 miles and it's hitting? That must... that ha... That's <laughs> <got> <laughs> lost for <my> words. <laughs> Fuck it. Imagine that. That machine has a lot of power. Railgun. I know of the railgun. To gun. be shooting Game, that. Loads of games had the railgun, like Quake, Hell Divers 2, that's a new one. Railgun's like a famous term. But fucking hell, I didn't realise it was like that. 250 miles. And they keep improving That's a it. longer journey than to from here to my mum's house. Mad. Yeah, your mum's house is like 40 miles. My mum's house is about 50 miles. I can't accept this. I can't fathom it. It's just the, it's just I'm too mad. I'm right now. Yeah, it's too mad to even understand. It's like above us, oh, fucking hell. As part of tests in 2008, scientists mad. were able to fire a 6.61 pound projectile at 1.56 miles per second. In terms of range, only missiles can compare with the railgun, but these days any missile can be countered by a wide array of equipment. Besides, Rockets cost millions of dollars, while a railgun shell costs the military twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars at most. Compared to miss, that's quite mad. One bullet, twenty grand. Wow. But look at what it's doing, though. Fucking hell. Pricey bullet, isn't it? Pricey, but worth it. This is practically pennies. The transportation and loading of ammunition, unlike missiles, doesn't necessarily create any problems. After all, these projectiles can't detonate at random, which comes as an unqualified victory for the railgun. One of the few disadvantages of this futuristic weapon was manufacturing projectiles from materials with maximum conductivity. Any other kind of projectile will simply vaporize in the railgun before being fired. Another potential problem is sourcing power. After all, it's extremely expensive to build an entire fleet with railgun feeding in mind, and the power consumption of a 70 megawatt cannon can be equated to the power consumption of a Stop. small American town. The laser weapon system... You know how I said I'm going to run for my dear life? I, I can't run from this. <laughs> you just try to so jump over it. I try to take my, take my first step, that's, I'm gone. Yeah, Taken you'll, be, out. you'll be gone, man. <laughs> that, this is too mad. A straight a through as well. Yep. Another type of weaponry that came straight out of science fiction. 
evolving from a class of imaginary technology to real and very intimidating weapons. The laser weapon was developed laser. by ingenious engineers from Kratos Defense and Security Solutions commissioned by the US Navy. The project was launched in 2007 and its main purpose was to destroy drones, small maritime vessels, fighters, and to suppress the electronic systems of air targets. In 2010, the company signed an $11 million contract to develop LAWS as part of an alternative weapons program, directed energy and electric weapon systems. As a result, a year later, the laser system was tested. It was able to successfully disarm a flying target vehicle, and in 2017, the military performed a full-scale test in the Persian Gulf. In 2014, the USS Ponce, patrolling the Persian Gulf, was equipped with a 30 kilowatt laser system. The purpose of this was to check its operability and effectiveness in the field. The main advantage, as in the case of the railgun, is the low cost of ammunition, less than one dollar. That said, wow. there are several levels of firing energy, both for disabling electronics and physically damaging equipment. The Mark 45 is a versatile remote control torpedo designed to hit targets at long range. The main targets of this type of torpedo are fast submarines oh. and surface objects. Imagine seeing that in real life. God damn. That is I, I mad. Lost my voice over there. Mad. That, the way it blows up like that. And it's such a big ship and it's just. God oof. damn. God fucking damn. The projectile is equipped with an active and passive guidance system to engage targets quickly. But the cherry on top is the multiple attack system used by the torpedo. If it suddenly loses its target, the Mark 45 will rescan the area, find its target, and attack it again. It's like a smart Until missile. 2008, seven modifications of this weapon were created. The very first version cost only eight hundred ninety-four thousand dollars, but each thing is it for normal only. for normal humans like us. That sounds like in like we can't even fathom that kind of money. But for the U.S. military, that put a trillion in only. a year for them. That's pennies. Even that, that when the guy pennies. was saying about even the guy when he was saying twenty k a bullet, he's like that's pennies in comparison to the money they put in. So for us, it's like, oh my God, but for them, that's like, yeah, like we spend that. It's normal. Like we have to, you know, because otherwise it's we can't. change. That yeah, it's change, yeah. For in them. the car. <laughs> Under the couch. Yeah. You find that little two pound oh, coin. Oh, I felt some change. Let's get some new missiles. Let's get a new missile. 800 grand. Each latest seven sea bass projectile cost $3.8 million. Fucking hell. The UGM-133A Trident II is a fourth generation, three-stage American ballistic missile and is the only representative of submarine launched ballistic missiles in service with the US Navy's SSBNs. These missiles can be found on board USS Ohio class submarines, which can carry up to 24 Trident II simultaneously. These missiles currently make up for about 52% of the US strategic nuclear forces. The Trident II is capable of covering over 7,000 miles allowing it to reach anywhere in the world. The high accuracy Mads. of the Trident effectively engages even the most hardened targets. You know what's even scarier about that? Don't get me wrong, it's fucking crazy that I can travel 7,000 miles, but the fact that I can just get launched from a submarine into the air, so the submarine can be anywhere underwater, and boof, missile coming out and going wherever it wants. Scary. That's the power. Literally, if America wanted to, they could probably take out the whole world. On they, their own. They, I think they can. It's just too much. How do you defend against this shit? You I'm can't. <laughs> I said I was going to run for my life. That's not doing anything. <laughs> you running with your little legs ain't helping nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Bunkers and intercontinental ballistic missile silos. The projectiles are notable not only for their power, but also for their combat achievements. For example, they currently hold a record for the number of successful launches in a row. And because of their high reliability, the United States plans to use them at least until 2042. 
Tomahawk Missile Block 5 is the Tomahawk. latest short-range, multi-purpose, high-precision subsonic cruise torpedo modification. I like how they say multi-purpose. Like, you know, like when you got cleaning products in the kitchen. Oh, it's multi-purpose, mate. These are talking fucking missile multi-purpose. Yeah. It's a whole different language to like the normal citizen. Development of the Tomahawks began in 1972 as part of a renewed program for cruise missiles by the U.S. Army, which at the time was heavily impressed with the USSR's success in this field. The development resulted in the first surface flight test from the USS Merrill in 1980, and by 1982 the missile was completed. These missiles are in service with US Navy warships and submarines, although the missiles themselves were designed with land and airborne use in mind. Due to their design features, they can successfully navigate around uneven terrain. In some cases, the missiles can be used as unmanned reconnaissance vehicles equipped with additional hardware and deliver munitions or ammunition to allies in cases where delivery by other methods is impossible. So they could even be used to support and re-ammo like, or like basically like a delivery surface. So, oh shit, they blocked off all our other ways of doing it. We're going to send the fucking Tomahawk to our boat over there to give them food and they can and, use it and they could or reload ammo yeah. if they probably fucking store it inside it's somewhere. good though that they've managed to but the fact that they need to think like this is quite like raw like they, they're at a level where they, this is the shit they have to come yeah. to to be this powerful because they have to think of everything they need to though because if you look at where america is they're in the middle of the ocean so yeah. they can be attacked from any side that's why the navy's so important. they need to be strong Otherwise, they're fucked. If they were weak and easy entry, though, they would get invaded a lot easier, yeah, right? They would have been taken over ages ago. Yeah, if their military wasn't like that, then yeah, their military is just too good. And Due to weather conditions or enemy air defense operations, one such missile costs American taxpayers one point eight seven million dollars. <laughs> the SM two is one of the Mad. newest American anti-aircraft guided missiles in the Raytheon standard family. Combat ships are equipped with such missiles, and today, they can be seen not only in the US Navy, but also among many US allies around the world. One of the main differences of the second version was the new combined guidance system. It eliminated the need for the army to have a radar beam accompany the projectile to constantly illuminate the target throughout the missile's flight. It now tracks the target with radio corrections transmitted to the missile after the radar detects the target. The illumination itself is switched on for just a few seconds for more accurate targeting, due to which the firepower and interference immunity have been significantly improved. Missiles designed to work with the Aegis fire control system have been recently modified with a two-way communication channel between missile and delivery vehicles. How would you feel knowing your tax paying money is going towards shit like this if you lived in the US? Would you be all right with it? I'd feel safe in my country. Yeah, I would love it. <laughs> I'd be like, mate, I'm funding these fucking... Obviously, my small, tiny contribution ain't crazy. Yeah, but they're, like, take, they're, they're using that money to invest into this weaponry to keep the country safe from ever being invaded. So I'd feel safe. I'd feel like country. money's worth. Yeah. Money well spent. You could take my tax. Just keep investing in those big old boys. Big old boys. Big old rockets. Thanks to this, the military was able to control the flight of the SM-2 during its march, optimizing its trajectory and leaving its target with no chance to evade the projectile. A single SM-2 launch costs the U.S. Navy about $409,000. Wow. SM-3, the legacy of the first versions, didn't come in vain, as the American company Raytheon followed the previous versions with its next brainchild, the SM-3 surface-to-air guided missile. Like its predecessors, it is mounted on destroyers, cruisers, or assembly. Oh, we learned about the ships. They carry aircraft. They yeah. carry soldiers in there. Over f about 5,000 people. Yeah. So we learned all about that. Yeah. That's why we're doing these videos. Mm -hmm. To educate.
labeled as ground installations. <laughs> This version has its own kinetic warhead and is guided automatically by a high-resolution, homing infrared warhead. It can even withstand dangerous weapons, such as ballistic missiles and interballistic missile warheads. For example, in 2001-2002, to the missile was able to successfully intercept a simulated ballistic missile warhead at an altitude of 155 Mad. miles. And in 2020, the experiment was repeated by launching the SM-3 Block 2A, which destroyed a test target near the Hawaiian Islands. Another aspect of missile technology that has undoubtedly evolved alongside the missiles is the price. One SM-3 cost the United- So would they test these products, because as this commentator just mentioned, they tested it um, near the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. What happens to the surrounding area? Fuck knows. They probably make sure it's clear beforehand or something. And what happens to the life in the ocean? It just dies for well, testing if, purposes. Thing is, if it's getting tested in the air, then obviously... But we'll have to hit a target, no? Yeah, but they're not aiming at the fish. They're like they're So they will shoot a rocket up and then they'll use the anti-rocket to test it on their own rocket to see that it works. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? But when these missiles are getting shot from the submarines, obviously some ocean life might be affected from that. But I don't think they care to that degree where it's like, they have to test it. Gotta sacrifice the fishes. <laughs> R.I.P. Fishy. United States a pretty penny. Specifically $10 oh million dollars to launch the SM-3 Block 2B. What the and fuck? And the SM-3 Block 2A is even more expensive at $18 million. That's like four or five Bugattis just to launch the rocket and the cost of it. For one rocket, so mate. Is it because that's how much it the production takes to build it? technology to launch it? I'm guessing they need different things to launch. Oh my God. So expensive. And that's why when they said twenty grand a bullet, for them that's cheap. they other things are costing them 80, 18 mil a launch. Twenty grand for a launch or whatever is like a joke compared to that. What do you think about modern weapons? Will railgun Mad. lasers be able to outlast other weapons for the foreseeable future thanks to their performance and more affordable price? What impressed you the most? Be sure to share your thoughts with us in the comments. Also, if